if you don't, if you don't hear this, you don't go like, well, come on, <laughs> hold the fuck up. But like, aren't you rich? And like, what, what, what is this sales job that you had? Like anybody that just doesn't, that takes this with just without a single fucking like grain of salt, I feel like you could just run them. Like they're just like, it, that, that's just the most rube coded individual. Like I could fucking like, I could grease you. Okay, let's get into this. All right. So everyone knows Hassan. Everybody knows Hassan. Hassan the Hunt. Mr. 9-11 was an outside job, and I would have done it myself if they would have given me the chance. Um, Hassan Abi is the biggest political streamer, I believe, on Twitch.tv. Um, he's also, in the last year, two years, basically started maybe a permanent transition into becoming like a fucking lol cow and basically just like a permanent drama baiter through a hundred percent the fault of his own um no matter what happens with Hassan, the most irritating thing about his fans to this day are the fact that they cannot get over the fact that Hassan does shit and then those are the repercussions for what Hassan does <laughs> he is he is fucking up. I think Eric, I think Hassan would be 100% better if he streamed like two times a week and did other shit. Um, everyone agrees. Everyone agrees. There's a reason I lock this to like 16-ish hours a week. Three or four or four hour episodes. Because I don't fucking have that much to say to you guys. And I'm me. I talk this much. He doesn't talk at all and he's still somehow fucking stressed out. Um, but I'm going to hop into this. So this is, apparently he said something along the lines of recently that streaming is harder, streaming for nine hours a day is harder than most people's jobs. It is just not. Yeah, my point is I personally feel insecure about like what my output looks like to other people. I don't want people to think that I'm like, you know, I, I hate being around them. I don't, I'm just really tired. So I, I'd rather like avoid those kind of circumstances. Now, you know how, how it is with real jobs feel? Yeah, it's funny you say that because I used to have a real f job and I was infinitely more social because this is the one area where I absolutely will disagree with you on. Yes, a real job can be gruesome. A real job can make you very... What real job did he have? I want him to talk about... the Because it's like... I used to have a real job. Like, he had the one, which is psychotic. <laughs> you know, if... Like, I, I, I'm going to let him finish. I don't know. Unironically though, but if you're streaming like fucking 10 hours a day to the point where you're stumbling over your words this much and you can't fucking like explain yourself or you don't give a fuck to explain yourself, then I don't give a shit if people don't understand what the fuck you're saying. Get the, turn the camera off if you can't explain yourself into it. Turn the fucking camera off. You know what I mean? Log off, buddy. Log off. Understanding what I'm saying. Let, let me, let me. A real job finish. does not expend your social battery in the same way as someone who did a sales job a real job i'm telling you as someone who did did both nine hours of of constant performance and people pleasing paps you out from social scenarios after nine hours so that i could probably do physical labor it would not bother me but i can't do more social sh that's my point there are obviously real jobs out there that are good comparisons service sector people pleasing jobs would be very similar those are like i think customer service type but like if you're an accountant or if you're even like in sales, my interactions with clients was limited, way more limited than like constantly having to do this for nine hours with like a back and forth interaction for nine hours. That's what like sucks your, your social battery and you just tap out after it. Yeah, think about it this way. You give presentations for your job, right? Imagine giving a presentation for nine hours straight. After a while, you'd be like, I don't want to talk ever again. <laughs> um. I call it like the dead zone. When I'm done streaming, um, I usually have like at least a, a refractory period of an hour where I just sit there and silently stare at my phone. That was my point. And that decompression time period, that decompression time period, if you're doing that in front of other- Well, here's the thing. This is why like, I, I don't care. All this is fine. But the thing is, is it is just, that's just, this is just describing work. Everybody's like that after a nine hour workday, unless they're working a job they specifically love specifically love i'll tell you not even not a social job not a social job really at all other than like the one that you have to talk my dad 
was a chef, well, like a cook, right? And worked in kitchens when I was growing up. He, eventually, he was a kitchen manager, basically, most of the time that I was young. And by kitchen manager, I don't mean in a fucking McDonald's. My dad worked at like the fucking Hyatt Regency in downtown Cincinnati and places like that. Fucking cooking 5,000 steaks for multiple catered events at convention halls throughout the entire, like insane amounts. And he worked eight to 12 hour shifts and he didn't have to fucking have whole ass conversations with anybody. And he would come home exhausted because that's just what work is. It's just fucking exhausting, right? Um, I would go out on patrols <laughs> in, in, in the military. I know that's like the cheapest way to say it, but like I wouldn't talk to fucking anybody. But then when I got done, I would be fucking exhausted. You know what I mean? Because that's just work. What, what Hassan is describing is just work. Now, yeah, specifically the job that you do, you probably don't want to do that after work. When I worked at Chipotle, obviously I didn't want to get off of work from Chipotle and then go like cut steak and onions and shit. Um, but I didn't really want to do much of anything because I had just gotten off work because that's just what getting off work is. <laughs> what what his son is describing like uh, nine hours of a presentation bro, nine hours of anything. If I got off nine hours of playing hell divers too. I would have just been playing hell divers for nine hours straight. I would not want to do anything like I, I'll you'll that's just, that's exhausting. That's a day's work. Even if it's spent like at play, it, it's just a dumb, it Hassan, I will make this fucking statement a thousand times. We'll never understand. There is no fixing him because he's past the point of repair. Hassan is a spoiled rich kid from an easy background like he just had an easy life a cakewalk and he'll never get that it wasn't you can't explain it to him because first off he just probably won't permit it to it like it just like he just had an easy existence everything was basically handed to him the things that he thinks are difficult i do bo I, I i do for fucking fun like it, it's just it's off it's easy as fuck to do you know what i mean like mostly you're getting by because you, you got fucking you, you first off, you just get to live in LA. If you don't understand, that's a privilege is to live in LA is literally a privilege. doesn't matter who you are. That's just proximity to opportunity. That's a privilege. You know what I'm saying? Just, he never really fucking articulates that having a family that sent you to school, that let you go to private school that made it so that even if you had bad days, you wouldn't have to worry about like fucking your entire life up, like taking a risk on being a streamer. There's a lot of other people that are as funny as outgoing, as charismatic as fucking Hassan is, but they don't get to take the chance because they fucking can't risk it. Because if they like show up tired to a shift at the fucking GameStop, you know what I mean? If they're not like a hundred, a hundo, like uh, working at fucking, working at the oil change place, like they could lose that job. And then they're fucking that $89 that they needed to make in that last day to afford rent is gone. And they're out on their fucking street. Like people, people don't understand how close, like it's really people like Hassan. They'll just never understand how close, like even someone in my position is to like two mistakes away. Max from homelessness, two mistakes. Like you didn't even really fuck up that bad. Homeless. Blah like that. I'm pretty insulated because I've worked away from it my entire life. But when I was like 18, 19, when I was in my mid twenties, even in school, I could have fucked up something like that. And then you're just out on the street done. Bye. Sorry. Like lucky me. Yeah. I have family and stuff, but I might've been too proud to fucking say anything, which is how a lot of other people end up like that. Like Tyler, why are you talking about homelessness? Cause dude, that's the threat that looms over the head of the working class. That's how they keep you fucking in line. That's why rent is something that we talk about. That's why people are so pissed at him about his fucking house all the time, because that's an insane thing to have like security in is just a home a home in one of the wealthiest, if not maybe the wealthiest city on earth. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're fucking literally driving distance away from every professional contact you could ever fucking ever need to secure 
more success in your chosen field. Like you're fu you're literally every day is a fucking gift. Shut the fuck up if it's hard. No one cares. Shut the fuck up. It's cake. It's a cakewalk. You didn't have you've never had a bad day in your life, man. <laughs> like you don't even understand what goes into having a bad day. And just that disconnect makes people pissed. It infuriates people. And you should shut the fuck up about it. You should. Like, unironically, shut the fuck up. Oh, I can't defend myself? No, shut up. Take it on the chin like all the other rich people in L.A. do. Shut the fuck up and leave. Look, then you're done. You're done with it. Instead, you embarrass the entire fucking left, the entire fucking political organization that's set up around you, all the people that have talked to you, by literally just creating stupid bullshit about the working class when you already just literally in no way, shape or form look like you're wearing a fucking Rolex hat. These people are talking about media training. Oh, I got to appear this blah, 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 blah. Like dude, you're fucking it up. Don't get on. Don't, don't tell me about how hard your fucking job is and then fail to explain yourself and then talk about like, Oh, I got to work every day explaining myself. And it's so hard when I do it right. And I'm on for you guys. I'm doing such a good job at it. That I fuck up like dude you're just fucking up you just fuck up every goddamn time I see you popping the fucking thing when was the last time I got a fucking Hassan dub you know what I mean it's just fucking cringe every goddamn time and he doesn't fucking get it. he doesn't care he doesn't care cause he's rich he's always been rich you don't give a fuck about his chatters dude you, if you're a fucking Hassan chatter and you're popping back through this and you're mad a bit you could fucking die and he wouldn't give a shit and you know that I just want you to comment that you know he doesn't care if you live or die i just want to know that you've typed it before you make any response to me but yeah it's fucking exhausting like uh i'll say this um writing which is still work work compared to like this writing is one of the most mentally taxing things i have ever done including military stuff just because it just takes a lot it's like literally working a muscle I, I have no idea what, <laughs> what fucking careers that could change over to. I will just say it's stunningly, stunningly fucking exhausting. Um, but like, I, I just got like, I don't know. I come from working, you know, and everyone fucking hates the guy. Everyone hates the guy that is like other people don't understand. People don't know, man. You don't fucking you got soft hands, brother, soft hands. It's like, shut the fuck up, bro. Shut the fuck. The only reason you're working on an oil rig is because you're fucking stupid and you got two felonies. All right. That's why you're out in the middle of the prairie freezing your balls off covered in fucking mud. It's not because you're fucking hard. It's because that was the last opportunity that you could ever fucking get. You fucking halfway home staying motherfucker. Shut the fuck up. Everyone knows who you are. Soft hands, bro. You know how fucking hard I had to work to not have calluses every fucking day. You know how good it was? When I finally moved from cutting my hand once a week on something, <laughs> I've had ratchet slip. You know, have I told you guys all of the jobs that I had? I've had like fucking unironically like 20 plus jobs. Bouncer, one of the most exhausting ones. And I didn't talk to anyone all day except for one fucking guy. And it was my fucking boss. And that shit was soul sucking. And that was an eight hour shift, but it lasted fucking 12 hours because i had to go across a whole ass bridge and tunnel to get to it hour and a half to two and a half hours depending on how bad the traffic was and then an hour and a half and two and a half hours back plus the hour, eight hour work shift so like nine hours can suck a fucking dick <laughs> i don't even get paid for the four hours i'm on the road my boss was just such a fucking moron that i like i was literally i would i would sigh a big leg like this and I caught myself doing it when I heard my phone ring. Like my phone created a Pavlovian fucking response to pure exhaustion. My job was to work. I was working in aftermarket car parts, which isn't cool at all. Not in a cool way. He would buy bolt on parts and stickers and decals and all sorts of other random shit for dealerships. And we would go and install them. So like, if you have like animal control vehicles, like I would fucking be putting in, the little animal control cages and like putting in like toolboxes and shelves and desks and stuff in the back of vans. Miserable. Out in the fucking rain, snow, 
whatever the fuck. I did that job for like fucking eight months, $12 an hour. I swear, $12 an hour cash too, because the guy didn't want to fucking pay any goddamn taxes. I swear to God, it almost killed me because I was so fucking tired sometimes driving back and forth. I had no time. I was miserable as fuck. Didn't talk to anybody. I would spend most of the day literally in the back seats of or underneath fucking cars that nobody had ever owned yet. Fuck it. Half the time, like it, like once the fucking, you know, it, I did it through the winter too. So like in Virginia, so I got like a fucking like a headlamp on trying to read fucking half Chinese goddamn instructions to figure out where the fucking fuck bolt hole a one nine two five three eight six is on a ford escape model fucking ab2 year 2014 like fucking jesus christ going in and out you don't even know fucking you don't even know monotony until you've had to fucking rebore 17 fucking screw holes over and over and over again because the fucking assholes at the factory painted into them and they weren't supposed to (laughs) finish it up drive across to the other side of fucking virginia beach to another goddamn dealership get out of my car okay gotta go find uh on this work list fucking uh floor floor unit g219386 uh don't need keys for this one everything can be installed without just go find a random truck with fucking 69.99 on the front of it crawl underneath it start putting on fucking kick bars or step step bars chick 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 middle of the night freezing fucking cold fucking hand slips cat that's when i started listening to joe rogan too you know talk about people like oh i can't believe anybody would ever start listening to the alt right that sounds insane like dude just be unhappy underneath a car after the fucking uh, newspaper that you thought was going to be like the biggest opportunity of your life shut down six months after you started working there and just be just just be there alone listening to just fucking the sound of the highway and the fucking steadiness of a ratchet and like fucking have your hands slip while you're listening to fucking dipshit ass joe rogan and you're fucking you can tell your knuckles bleeding but you just don't even give a fuck like that's that's like a hard day at work because you know you got to come back the next day too you can't quit (laughs) you know what i mean like I'm going to be here the next day. We got fucking rent to pay. That shit fucking sucks. That's what working is. I'm I'm speaking to the choir. You know what I mean? I know some people have better jobs. Some people get to work in cybersecurity. And, you know, at least you got fucking air conditioning and shit. But that doesn't take away bad bosses. And what it really doesn't take away is the bottom line of I'm a fucking, I'm a bitch to some company. I'm, I'm flat a fucking bitch to some company. And I can't even argue with that for 40 hours, maybe plus a week. And if I fucking step out of line, they can take it from me. And if you don't have like a family, a wife, someone that's close to you to fucking help you pick up the pieces if stuff gets fucked, that's it. How much do I have in savings? $2,000? How, how much food and rent can that get before I find another job in this economy? Like, that's hard. That's hard. Like, there's people out there, like a, like a lady that'll have like a fucking like literal soft hands job. What does she do? She works in fucking secretariat secretarial fucking work right eight hours whatever nice but every day she comes in and her fucking boss puts his dick right next to her fucking shoulder and sometimes he bumps her with it can't really like report it right because she knows she'll get fucking canned but like every day she has to worry about this fucking dude who she knows is staring down her shirt like bump her in the fucking shoulder with his dick like that's just a real that's like real so like if you have like This is fucking great. Like, thank you guys for paying me. I feel like I worked toward this, you know, and I'll say that, but I know that this is fucking, I know that this is easier because I worked toward it because it was easier. This is not fucking handed to me. I'm scraping it together bit by bit fucking, and I'll never let it go because I don't want to fucking go back to it, but I've been through it. I have fucking sliced my finger cutting fucking shit at goddamn Chipotle. I have hit my head on 700 different fucking things. I have fallen down uh, OSHA non-compliant stairwells on fucking construction sites and dropped fucking $4 billion apparently worth of fucking quarter inch uh, copper pipe and bent it. Ah, fuck. You know what I mean? I've been there. I've done it. It fucking sucks. When I talk about job, I'll tell you what the fucking job is. I don't know what the fuck this guy did. 
He probably doesn't want to tell you because it's kind of shameful that he had a real job because he's out there in fucking Hollywood. Fuck those motherfuckers, dude. Like, I, honestly, like, yeah. Do I take it personally? Yeah, because I'm part of the fucking working class and Hassan never has been. Hassan never has been. He just never has been. He's not a fucking worker. He's just not. If he is, it's in the most like, hold on now, if we consult the tomes, <laughs> blow up the gigantic cloud of fucking dust. Ah, I see here that like he, he does fit the specification, you know, technically blah, 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 blah. But like, even if he's a fucking worker, worker, he's not really working class. You know, he's not, there is no solidarity to be had with Hassan. He didn't give a fuck about you. He fucking drinks. He fucking drinks your donos, drinks them all up. <sighs> Drainage. <laughs> and that's fucking it. Coding looks like weak shit until you're in the intern working 14 hours fixing shit that management took months to decide. 100%. I'll tell you what. Any job, any job that pays less than fucking $120,000 in a right to work state is ass. I'll just tell you. You might have to you might have to figure it out. You might be like, "What do you mean? You're like a you're a this this that and that." And like you make 100k and the person's just going to be like, "Like I do." And like that's great for me, but you just don't know. You just don't know. And then if you take down, like you knock it down, anybody, everybody, I'll tell you right. Everybody that's making less than 50 K in America is getting fucked. Just getting fucked. Raw fucked. Raw fucked. 24 seven. Fucked. 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 Inexcus inarguably. Like that shit's just horrible. <laughs> It just sucks, especially nowadays. 50K used to be nothing to fucking sneeze at when I was a child, 2005, <laughs> you know? Making, what did I make fucking monthly in the military? Like $314 was like fucking, uh, was, was, was PFC pay? God damn. Uh, I've seen serious sexual deviancy in very legitimate companies. Oh, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Anywhere where they can get away with it. Anywhere, anywhere that has a right to work legislation, which is all of America, basically. Every place that has right to work legislation, guarantee you, has fucking sexual harassment way higher than anywhere that doesn't. Because the right to fire is really what it is. Right to fire legislation just puts you so that you can fucking lose your job for made up reasons. They can just fucking make shit up. I had it happen to me. I had fucking people make up a reason to fucking can me from a job. And I told them like, do you have proof? Like, can I, and they're like, no. I'm like, can I see it? And they're like, well, we'll provide it to you. And they just never did. I just got taken to HR and I was like, they're lying to me. And he goes, oh, okay. And then like, you're just outside. Like there, there's no, no conversation. Just pop, 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 done. That's it. That's how easy it happens. Gone. What the fuck, what the fuck job has fucking Hassan had? Like, tell me, tell me about your working history. Like, I want to know. Maybe it's after this. Maybe it's after this. Ugh. Yeah, but Hassan already imagined working and it wasn't that hard. Checkmate. What well, true. Hassan couldn't possibly be wrong about things he's never experienced. <laughs> there are people, it's like, it just sucks. You just are dead. You're hollowed out. So people are like, I'm a fucking asshole. You've been clip champed and people are uh, acting like you said streaming is harder than other jobs. I, there's no shot, dude. He did. But he did. But I heard it. He did. He did say that streaming is harder than other jobs. He just did say that. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Look at this. Talk about my dad and sh This is not normal, dude. Destiny's fans are so I have to go because insane. it's 2 a.m. where I live. I just don't want to be on this dump subreddit. Well. There is no... Hassan, HCC's yeah. response to Hassan's take that streaming is harder than a regular job? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? I literally said something 10 minutes in, clipped out of context, had a conversation over it, immediately went to XQC, immediately XQC responds to it. Oh, it's insane. Tyler's going to be attacked by Asmund Ted Lice. Man, they've gotten so many views. <laughs> what a awful situation. Jesus Christ. I mean, I get where Hassan is Guys, coming from. I'm a profoundly a fortunate individual. Yeah. I've talked about this a million times over. What do you mean? Stop addressing it further. It is such short work. Well, literally, yes. Shut up. Like, just take the fucking L. Can you say he was just wrong? I just, just, just say you were, I, I, I clearly, if I'm having this much fucking pushback from it, I either didn't explain it right, or I need to fucking like boot some of y'all from fucking chat. Like bring somebody in, have somebody articulate the fucking response. Do something else. Cause this is just, 
this is just more LSF bait, I guess. Like, it, this just seems like it's going to go right next to the other thing. Like, okay, Hassan said dumb thing, and now it's just, oh, Hassan re- overreacts to other thing. Like, that's the thing. That, that's, that's the word I'm trying to use for it. There's reacting to stuff, which I feel like I do, and a lot of other streamers do pretty fucking fine. Uh, I watch a bunch of Loner Box, and um, Loner Box gets flack. Or he'll get like, you know, whatever, kick back from somebody. But he doesn't overreact to it. He just reacts to it. Literally less than 30 minutes, XQC reacts to it. That one gets brigaded as well. It's so obvious. Like it is happening. It is happening in real time. And, and then there's still people in my community that are like, just don't address it. It's like, bro, you know this matters, right? Like random normies see that and go, wow, this is a song guy. Real piece of shit. Socialist, by the way, look at him f-ing saying Twitch streaming is way harder than like working a f-ing real job, by the way. Clarify what your actual take is. I did. I'm a profoundly fortunate individual. This is the lottery. Having said that, my social battery runs out after nine and a half hours of streaming and I can't socialize adequately. And I worry that like I look like an asshole to random people. That was my point. That's all. But like, why don't you bring that energy to stream? You know what I mean? Like all that ranting. Am I insane? Am I insane to say that? All of this ranting, I, my social battery runs out. I'm afraid of looking like an asshole to people. Buddy. Bro, what do you think happens before you hit end stream? Did, did you think did, did you think it's a fucking, like, a switch that gets flipped? Or You're, you're a fucking asshole on stream, Hassan. You're, you're a fucking dickhead. I think that's what some people like about you, but you're a fucking asshole. I'd be stunned. I guess, you know... You'd have to hope that people haven't seen your stream out there IRL, but like you're a fucking asshole, dude. You're 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 a fucking prick. Like you're you're a fucking dickhead, man. <laughs> you're 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 clearly an exhausted, um, overstretched person that's been on the internet for too long every day for too many years. And it's really not worth it. I think you yeah, I think he's just a fucking number go up addict. Which you know, it's hard to beat. It's hard to beat. And he's probably talking to the other big streamers and he's like, yeah, 20K. And they're like, ooh, 22K. Oh, did you guys see fucking Aiden Ross on Twitch? He had 45K. And he was like, oh, on, on kick? He had 45K. Oh, he's cheating. Blah, blah, blah. All I said, I bet think that's about what they that. talk about. I said after nine and a half hours of streaming, because you constantly have to be on, and that's the one major difference that I've experienced in comparison to my prior experience being in sales, okay, where I at least had like off moments, where at least I had moments where I could be by myself and not on camera in the same way. Nine and a half hours of constantly trying to be on takes a mental toll on my social battery specifically. It's not as physically t- uh, uh, tasking or uh, taxing. Maybe talk to XQC. He doesn't give a shit, dog. What are you talking about? XQC literally just looking to farm drama. He's trying to do the Hassan again and again and again and again and again. What, what, what conversation could I have with him? And I'm telling you, the reason why he did it is because someone sent it to him, probably a Destiny fan in his community sent it to him and was like, this is great. Look how f- stupid uh, Hassan looks here in this clip. He knows what the f- I believe. It's bullshit. It's extra bullshit that he still operates like this. You're wrong on this. You could literally ask the subreddit mods to ban anything to do with you and you wouldn't have this issue. You're so f- stupid. I have asked the subreddit moderators to ban me. They literally f- privately DM me on a Discord server that they set up specifically for this purpose. I asked them to ban me in the past. And then I was like, listen, dude, I don't want to f- be on this Discord. Why the f- are they posting this? Sh-? They literally leaked the private conversation that we had to make fun of me over it. You have no idea what the f- you're talking about. Why, like, why did you put that up? And then, like, this is these fast clips with these really tiny text bits. I'm staring at this on a 1080p monitor. Like, it's not like a fucking non-existent. But none of what he said is like justified by that. He said, "Hey, uh, can you take me off LSF? Can, can you stop post? It's legal to do. Just legal. Hey, can you stop making content because it's bothering me? Well, why is it bothering you?" Um, I don't like the fucking low view count thing. It's just dunking on me for low view view counts. Okay, well, we took that off. So, it's gone now. Okay, well, fuck you. Your site sucks. I hate you. It seems like all this is for is for brigading me and sending people to, like, sadly, fucking, like, harass me and shit and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, dude, you played fucking video games with, like, a sitting national level politician and that was, like, a major thing in the run-up to a sweep election. It was kind of crazy, right? Um, like you, you have a massive platform. So like any, like why would they give up content? Like in a callous way, why would they give up content because you're butthurt about it when it's not violating Reddit's rules? It's not, it's not illegal. It's perfectly legal to post. Like, why would they not do it? 
stop being famous is I guess what I would say, <laughs> you know, like Tyler, you're just making this video and then someone's going to see it and they're going to reach out and they're going to harass us on like, well, somebody's going to harass us on no matter what, cause he's a major fucking political figure. I'm currently number one villain on LSF and I have been for some time. Obviously it goes through waves. Sometimes Asmongold is that guy. Sometimes even XQC <laughs> gets to be that guy crazy. for a brief moment. The one guy that's never that guy is destiny because he runs that because his, his community is very active on Reddit and pretty much that's the most active area that they're at. Yeah. So they just constantly brigade over and over and over again. But what is the point? Do I have to self? Is that when the subreddit will get nuked? How many people does this have? To this is such a shitty, like th th this is fucking log off, bro. Log off. Th I know, this is literally a call to action. This is literally just a fucking call to action for his psycho fucking fans. That, it, it, it's past the point. It's past the point of reservation. Hold on, let me just see. I've got to get on live stream fail real quick. What is this? Live stream fail. This better be worse than fucking Kiwi Farms. This better be the worst shit I've ever fucking seen. And it's a subreddit, so I already know it's not. How bad is it? Is it, is it fucking, is it literally death incarnate? Aiden passes out on roller coaster with X. I guess I'll, I'll show you guys too, because I'm looking at it. Boop. The PD versus Corn Cornwood getting serious. Koreans streaming hentai on their last day on Twitch. <laughs> Huge loss for Twitch. This clip is no longer available. Kick has been unbanned in Turkey while Twitch is still banned. Okay, so th this is this is definitely not the fucking. Uh, this is the worst shit ever. I guess. Well, hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Hassan. Hassan. Hassan asks Houthi pirate whether they watch One Piece. I guess, can we go, is this top show past year? 3.8 thousand upvotes, 2.7 thousand comments. That's not that much for like a major subreddit either, by the way, because I know that there was more votes and comments on the fucking Destiny video of him than this. So Hassan defends his use of racial slurs and calls out Destiny. Hassan says he makes the same amount of money as a doctor. <laughs> Every one of these is fucking a broken link anyway, so. Who gives a shit? Destiny comments on Hassan. This is research time for Hassan. The longest books that he can read are tweets. <laughs> God damn, Hassan. Destiny's a fucking dickhead, bro. Happens when this kind of stuff happens, it's not just like people saying kill yourself. People say kill yourself to me all the time. I don't give a I'm not gonna kill myself, obviously. But when this kind of stuff pops off and they, they post it on Twitter and sh I'm getting doxxed, I'm getting swatted, my family is getting doxxed, my family's getting harassed. That's not normal. And every single f but that's like happening to everybody. That's happening to everybody. You know what I mean? And it's like, but it does happen and it is normal. Like it's bad that it is, but I don't think it's unique to Hassan, like at all. Because like, dude, this is what you're asking. This is what, that's fame. You're famous. That's what fame is. And you attract a lot of controversy. When you say like, I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want to people and I don't care. Um, I can do that because people don't give a fuck who I am. Like, they just don't give a shit. I'm not worth the, the I'm not worth the time. But like, bro, you're a fucking, <laughs> you came out in favor of 9-11 one time. What, what is the sales job that you had? Like anybody that just doesn't, that takes this with just without a single fucking like grain of salt. I feel like you could just run them. Like they're just like, it, that, that's just the most rube coded individual. Like I could fucking like, I could grease you. Like it, like it hurts when you hear it, you know, cause I'll say something like that to somebody. And they, if you're coded for that, you'll be like, <gasps> I don't like the implications of that. But like, Hey, if I'm telling it to you, to your face, it's way harder for me to do it. So you're slightly safer. But I'm telling you, if it offends you that you think that that could happen, and if it's happened to you and you're in that community, think about it. Tia, Tia, por favor. Are you listening to a lot of Hassan? But they, maybe this is reminding you of you when you bought those energy drinks. Tia, por favor. Maybe think about it again. <laughs> Tyler used to watch Hassan like most of us in chat. We're all ex Hassan watchers. Yeah, like I, I, like I watch people for a bit. I watch all kinds of different fucking content, you know, and you go in and then you come out and then you go in and then you come out because sometimes it's like good and sometimes it's bad. 
Like I like, I still like old thought slime content. You know, I think we're we're probably solid, and I don't think I can fucking beat this horse anymore. And I gotta go to bed. I used to like thought slimes content, and I feel like if I went back and watched the good stuff from when I was watching him, I would still like it. I think if I watched the Hassan election streams that I basically got me into watching his shit, I think I would enjoy that too. If I went back and I watched a bunch of the Vosh debate streams that I enjoyed, I think I would enjoy that still the same way. But for a lot of these streamers, I think they kind of calcify out and they get lazy because there's no real code for this. But I think for Hassan especially, and this is the one point I really wanted to make because I, it hasn't been refuted in my head and now I feel like very comfortable in making. I think Hassan doesn't believe in a lot of the stuff he says. Not like he's like actually like secretly like a hyper capitalist. I think he picked up. Let me, I'll, let me describe it this way. In George Carlin's stand up special, the name of which I can never remember. He says, and then underneath the lizard brain, you have the mammalian brain or under the mammalian brain, you have the lizard brain and the mammalian brain wants to go. The mammalian brain says, I, I don't know what I want to do. I want to go to the protest. And then the lizard brain says, yeah, let's go to the protest. I don't believe anything in it, but let's get laid. And that's kind of what it is. It's the, uh, he saw like a good opportunity and agrees with most of the stuff. I I've always noticed that Hassan has like, and there's no reason for him not to a special soft spot in his heart for any sort of like anti-Muslim sentiment, which makes fucking sense. You know, anti-Muslim sentiment does not get kicked back against it in America, the way that anti-Christian and anti-Jewish sentiment do when he gets pissed off about shit like that. I can actually see passion in him. And it's not just I'm upset because, you know, fucking Hassan upset his spaghetti. He seems like he's actually legitimately like offended by this because it affects, you know, his friends and loved ones, which which makes sense. I do not ever see that same sort of heat for like working class issues. Do you know what I mean? Like he'll get a little fucking like, you know, kind of kind of get a little bit fired up. Ooh, cops, man. I can't fucking stand cops, fucking cops kind of shit. But I just don't see him really going out for labor and stuff. And I think I think he's a bit of a shill. I really do believe. I, I have a deep. I, as a person, I hate gambling. But I would actually probably put like 250 bucks. I would put 250 bucks down that Hassan takes money from Chinese uh, lobbying interests. And that's not like conspiracy brained. I think he legitimately takes Chinese money. Um. And probably lobbying interest money from other people too, because that's like, it's kind of hard to say no to $20,000 to just say something you kind of already agree with and then just stop saying anything that you don't. You know what I mean? Uh, I, 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 I think that that's kind of the case. And I think really the biggest issue of burnout, I'm fine right now. Like I'll get off and I'll be a little bit tired. Um, talking a lot, you know, like when I did the seven hour stream on the weekend, I was a little like, I was like a little sleepy, you know, because I just talked too much. Mostly my, I just need to drink a bunch of water because I don't hydrate enough during these because I, I have to strike a balance between uh, approaching death by dehydration and pissing every five seconds because I have to drink like a liter of water. But like, it wasn't like killer. And I don't think it would be, honestly. I, I don't think it would be that big of a deal because I like what I talk about. I, I just think things and then I say them. I think Hassan feels like he has to hit talking points over and over and over again like he doesn't actually believe a lot of the stuff that he's saying or he's not fervently passionate in it and he's just got to get back into it again and again and again and again and it's fucking exhausting because he doesn't fucking care you know what i mean there's no way that hassan gives a fuck about working class issues not really not like not like you guys probably do or like i do i knew guys growing up who lost fingers and chunks of their hands and like had crazy big scars on them because I was from a blue collar fucking background and you can just get mauled on the job and people will be like, I'm fucking, I love fucking union because like the union made sure that I got fucking taken care of. Like I got this fucking whole thing paid for. And then I knew still other people that would like, they got fucked, you know, like, Oh shit, dude, they just threw us all out, you know? Like, and it's like for him, I guess it's, it's probably theoretical. Like maybe he knows like a few people, but like there's a whole town, <laughs> fucking in indiana i can't remember the goddamn name of it anymore the dhl plant shut down there i'll never forget about that because everybody this is like 2000s um everybody in my neighborhood in cincinnati nowhere near it were terrified because we had dhl workers there and like the dhl distribution plant shut down and killed the entire fucking town 
the entire town died in a night. In a night. And DHL didn't give a fuck. That's like a working class issue. You know what I'm saying? Like, the people that I, I'm around are like, fu- we're fucked. We're fucked if this keeps happening. We're fucked. We're going to lose our jobs. Like, the fear is everywhere because it's, it's class. It's a class fear. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, the guy that bakes bread is like, fuck, if the DHL plant shuts down, where the fuck am I? Who the fuck is going to buy my bread? The person who writes at the paper is like, who the, what the fuck paper am I going to write for when the goddamn plant shuts down? The fucking lawyer, you know what I mean? That, that Those fucking tax attorney shits. Like, fuck, I ain't going to be doing any goddamn tax attorney stuff. Maybe some people going to get a little bit more flight out of it. But, like, all the people at the fucking plant are fucked. All the people that immediately fucking sell shit to the plant people are fucked. It's wild, man. That's, like, real working class shit. I, just, I don't think that penetrates West Hollywood. Like, I respect, like, writer strike, whatever the fuck. You know, hey, I, I agree with your plan, but... That shit's not as big to me as them fucking striking at the goddamn Ford plants literally down I-64 from us. We got a bunch of fucking Ford um, electric plants, EV plants and stuff, and Ford plants and shit going in here in Kentucky. That's like real shit. I'd like to talk about stuff like that more, but I don't know if I can hold an audience. It's kind of rough. Cut all the great heroes over at the CCP. Xi Jinping allowing your stream to exist is so nice of him. Well, thank God. Thank God for fucking uh, Winnie the Pooh. Tanky's annoying me there, out of touch with the working class. Yes. The, the one thing that I knew, like, tankies are permanently my enemies, like, enemy enemies. Like, anarchists will fuck with me, right? And they'll say shit, and I'll be like, okay, anarchists, you little fucking guys. But, like, anarchists are always, like, conversational, right? Because anarchists also won't build up their anarchist unit. You know what? It, it, like, anarchists don't brigade. <laughs> That's really what it is. Anarchists don't build up and brigade. Anarchists are like, we kind of don't like that. They'll come and tell you personally. Anarchists will be like, hey, now, anar- uh, you need to read some Bakunin or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, like tankies are fucking, they're, they're just, they're, they, my definition of socialism, that includes fascism as an aspect of socialism, predictive. It becomes immediately predictive. They are just fascists, but they're fascists with ostensibly leftist values, the values of which if you try to penetrate their fucking like talking points at all, disintegrate immediately into, well, you need to understand in 1823 when the fucking this and that was happening. Uh, well, if we go back to 1922 and the Romanovs, you're like, what the fuck are you, what the fuck is this, bro? I'm talking about the goddamn DHL plant shutting down. You know what I mean? They don't care. And if, if you start talking about like, well, I'm really concerned about the working class issues that are coming up. That's always going to be my biggest thing because I feel like a rich working class, Oh, oh not rich, but like, a well-funded, strong, healthy, vigorous, rights-laden working class will have the ability to say, we're not going to support a war. We're not going to support a, a, a genocide in Israel. We're just not going to do it. Like, hey, we want to vote on this. Like, we don't want to... The trains aren't going to fucking drive bombs to that base. The fucking people like, uh, we're not, we're not loading, uh, like the crane operator, the Stevedores union is not loading fucking bombs on a fucking, on a boat heading to Israel. The boat fucking people, you know, uh, the merchant Marines fucking are, you know, whatever Marine transit, like t- local 333. We're not going to be putting any fucking bombs on one of these boats. Like we're just not going to drive with that, uh, to, to, in support of this all the way down. You get fucking workers rights. You can actually have those conversations. But with everybody fucking terrified, you know, you can't even get involved in the electoral process. But like, no, we've got to spend all of our political capital on something that's, it's literally, and it's the saddest thing to say, completely fucking out of our hands. You can't do shit about it. You would be better off if you're trying to fix something, literally just go overseas and fight. You'll you'll change more if you just go overseas and start fucking scrapping. Or instead of doing something that futile, like try to help with evacuation shit, then you'll ever get done in America. Like, it the the genocide was bought and paid for three generations ago. <laughs> like, like it, it's it's we're describing a nightmare. It's miserable. It's not like hey, fucking sit down and take it, get out there, complain, raise hell and shit, but don't let them steal your rights for an L. It a, a pre-programmed into the grain. It's in the fucking bones of the whole country. Pre-programmed L. Like and like subscribe. And like, 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 like,